announcing today our mean reversion algorithm. So, so far in Stats Edge Pro, we have a trend following algorithm, which is looking for stocks to break out and continue a already established trend. We have a pullback algorithm, which is looking for a massive move on week one. And then we're looking to buy in on a pullback and have that continue over the following week. And now we have the mean reversion algorithm. Mean reversion essentially just means this name has been selling off for a number of days or a number of weeks, and we are buying it as it's selling off. Now we're always going to pick stocks that are overall strong, we're not going to be buying weak names, we're not going to be buying, you know, uh, meme stocks that are going bankrupt or, or anything like this. So they're already strong names. They are just names that have been pulling back for a period of time. And statistically, they're a little bit overdone. So we're looking to get involved with those. Just like the pullback algorithm, this is a shorter term nature. The idea is you buy them with a stop in place, and then you sell them on the following week, if you're just following the system. But as always, we want to make sure we're applying some amount of human thinking to that. If we think we've got a really good buy point on this pullback, maybe we sell a chunk of the position, we hold some, maybe we hold all of it, right? This is make the trades your own. But at least we get to start with a really good statistical edge, which I'll show you all the statistics behind the behind the algorithm here. But that's what we're doing. We're talking about the mean reversion algorithm today. Uh, again, if you're not already watching this on statsedgetrading.com, go to statsedgetrading.com. You can check out the Stats Edge Pro section. Um, and you have now 30 symbols that will get sent to you uh, on a weekly basis. You And also access to our Discord alert bot, which will just alert you when the prices are hit with a stop loss, what algorithm they're from. So you can just bring them up wherever you are in the world, see if it's something that you want to trade. Now, let's pop in here. This is what, uh, just using this as an example of what triggered today, this is what uh, these symbols will more or less look like. If we go to the weekly chart, you can see this thing's been pulling back now for a number of weeks, actually really, really strong. But yeah, it's been pulling back for a number of weeks here, getting to that oversold kind of an area as this thing's continued stronger. But on the daily chart, you can see again, we're buying on the way down. So we're down one, two, three, four, five, six days in a row. The idea is that the algorithm would say buy it here, put the stop loss where the stop loss recommendation for the algorithm is sell it next Monday. So hold it for a week and then sell it on Monday. For me personally, what I do is I like to watch them at this level. So I'm just going to watch this, you know, maybe on a 30 minute chart or something like that, just give it a little bit of time to see looks like we're putting in a bottoming tail right at this area, this could be holding really good. So if this continues to hold, then I'll just pick some up, I'll put the stop loss with stop losses, and I'll set a little reminder to remind myself, hey, next week, take a look at this, either sell some sell all or, uh, or hold it depending on what it is that it looks like to you. Now, let's take a look at the statistics behind this. So for the test period, you got to remember, the SP 500 had about a 5% return, this is about a 15% yearly return. And the SP 500 has about a 60% drawdown, max drawdown here was 34%. And that was actually around the 2008 financial collapse. Now, part of the discretion I add to things is I would think around a, you know, economic disaster like that, I would be mitigating this drawdown some by trading smaller, or as we'll talk about trading different systems with it. Now, if we take a look at the individual systems, we can go or the individual months, we can see what an average year looks like what an average month looks like we do have some drawdowns, right? This is a 21% down in, in 2008. Uh, ever since then, we only had two drawdown years one in 2017 for just a little bit. And then the other in 2020 during the COVID collapse for again, a little bit. Uh, the other years have been fantastic. 2021 has been great. Uh, 2022, even though for mean reversion buying when the market was oversold, that still did very well. And so did um, 2024 so far is working phenomenally. A couple down months, one that wasn't much fun around April. Uh, but after that, things have been doing fantastic. And here's what the average drawdown per year kind of looks like it's around 10, 10 to um, maybe 20% is what you'll kind of get year to year. Just taking a look at the graph, right, it's $1 up to around 20. So 20 times your money since the year 2000. And again, you can see where these drawdown occurs, right, we have a drawdown around 2006 to 2009, with the great financial collapse. Uh, we have one, this was where uh, Trump and Powell were fighting about interest rates, that area right there, we have the, um, the COVID collapse as well. So 
the times that a lot of systems draw down, especially systems where you're buying things that are moving lower, draw down this draw down as well. So we're going to pay attention to that. We're going to be watching the market very closely to mitigate those risks. You can see, yes, we had one uh, substantial or one long period of drawdown, but other than that, the drawdowns look okay. So if we avoid it 2008, and if we avoid it 2020, our drawdowns like cut in half, right? So you just have to say, well, am I aware enough about what's happening in the market that I could do something like that going forward and use a different, different algorithm. So now let's take a look at this. And I just combined both our pullback algorithm and our revision to the mean algorithm. And just called it by the dip. So as opposed to, you know, taking the trend following and the rotation strategies out of there, just using I'm going to use these two algorithms in tandem. The reason that I added this to our repertoire is you can see very, they play off each other very, very well. So we'll watch this one closely and I'll show so the uh, the mean reversion algorithm, right did very well when we only apply half of our buying power to it right, you can see a 7% year over year growth beating the market with a 21% marks max drawdown. So very much beating the market there. Then the second day play with another 21% year over year growth, and a 28% drawdown. So if you combine those, you get a 30% year over year growth, and then a roughly 30% max drawdown. But let's take a look at the equity curve here, you can see what's happening is that the mean reversion algorithm when it's not doing well, so you can see 2001 to 2003, the pullback algorithm is and when you can see, right here in 2008, the they are offsetting as well. So we can see that the drawdowns of these two systems aren't heavily correlated, right, the drawdown between the mean reversion algorithm and the pullback algorithm is only 0.26. That's a very low correlation. That's ex actually exactly what we want to see. We want to make sure that we are trading systems that aren't going to just double us up when the market's doing well, or double us up when the market's doing poorly, we want systems that trigger at certain times. Now, if we go back up to what kind of the yearly uh, area looks like, you can see some of those drawdowns are mitigated, right? 2008 is way better. Uh, that 2017 is gone, but 2018, we had a little bit of drawdown, and then 2020 is gone as well with a break even ish year. So this is what we're doing at Stats Edge Trading, we are stacking algorithms on top of each other. Now on top of what the weekly, what I the video that I give out weekly, kind of goes over my view of the market. And that's why I still spend a lot of time doing technical analysis on the overall market inner market analysis, that type of thing, is because I believe that any edge that I give to a system is not really in, you know, picking and choosing and looking at a chart and saying, Oh, this chart looks like it's going to break out and buying it. There's some people that do that. Well, I don't think as many as uh, people think, but I think the edge comes with what is the overall market environment we're in, which of these algorithms do I think will shine, and then I'm going to focus on that. Like right now, we are in a bull market. So I'm focusing heavily on the mean reversion algorithm, because when these things pull back, they're more likely to pop than when we were in bear markets, as we saw. So studying the markets you're in and the equity curve that happens during those markets helps give us an edge as well. So come on over to statsetrading.com if you're not already there give it a shot. Again, the idea behind this is we're buying it on whenever the alert goes off or whenever the price is made, and then we're selling it on the following Monday. What will happen with both the pullback and the mean reversion algorithm, which is why I'm okay with running these things together, is we end up sending out a lot of alerts or sending out a lot of orders if you're just fully automating it. But most of them won't get triggered. If you send out 10 alerts for each strategy. So maybe right 10 for the mean reversion and 10 for or 20 alerts total. So 10 for each one, you probably only get triggered on average week on a couple, maybe three to five. So this is why we're using alerts and the discord alert bot because then that saves the buying power and I don't have to have my order out there in the market. I know when that price get hits, the discord alert bot is going to hit my phone, it's going to say, Hey, check out this, it's hit your price. I go take a look at it. And then if I like it, I pull the trigger, I'm able to save way more buying power, go into the positions a little bit heavier that are triggering, and not have that buying power wasted in the overall market.